Number six, repeat the problem above, meaning number five, but reverse the order of the two legs of the walk. Show that you get the same final result. That is, you first walk leg B, which is 20 meters in a direction exactly 40 degrees south of west, and then leg A, which is 12 meters in a direction exactly 20 degrees west of north. Okay, so in order to do this problem, let's first take a look at each of these vectors individually. So first one, draw a coordinate system and then draw the a vector that's stated, meaning the 20 meter at 40 degrees south of west. So how would that look? Well, here's my starting point. The uh, line that would be representative of 40 degrees south of west would look somewhere around here. Here's 40 degrees south of west. Okay, here's the west component. Here's the south. All right, so the magnitude of that line I just drew is 20 meters. 20.0, but too many zeros here. <laughs> I'm just going to cut it out. So what we now need to do when we uh, describe this vector, all right, in order to find the resultant vector, what we're going to do is we're going to find the components of this vector. Okay, so what would be the, this would be considered the x component and the negative x component. And this other side would be considered the negative y component because they're in the negative x and the negative y directions. So what would be the negative x component? What would be the negative x component of this uh, vector? Well, to simply, find, oops, to simply find this, we know the hypotenuse is 20 and we know the angle is 40 and the negative x side is adjacent to that. So we would choose cosine. So cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Cosine of 40 degrees is going to equal negative x over the hypotenuse of 20. Now just in order to solve for the x value, just cross multiply here. So do cosine, cosine of 40 times 20. And we get a value of, make sure you're in degree mode, so negative x is equal to uh, 15, uh, we'll do two sig figs, so just 15. Okay, so 15 meters. Now remember to bring the x, the negative sign on over. Okay, and let's now do the same thing for the y component here, the negative y component. That's, the y is now on the opposite side of the angle, and therefore we're going to use sine to solve for that. So sine of theta is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse, sine of the angle of 40 is going to equal the negative y value over the hypotenuse of 20. So simply take out your calculator again and do sine of 40 times 20. So this works out to be about 13. Remember to carry the negative sign on over. Okay, great. So before we move on to the next vector, remember the whole purpose is what I want to do. I'm going to create my component, component table. Okay, I have my x components here, my y components here. And what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to plug in my components of each vector. All right, so for example, I just found that the x component of my first vector is negative 15 meters. And the y component of my first vector is negative 13 meters. Then what I'm looking to do is then find the x component of the next vector and the y component. And then what I'm going to do is add them together. Because when I add all the components up, what I do is I get the components of the resultant vector. All right? And that's what I need to, that's what I'm solving for, right? They're basically asking me, what's the resultant vector? Because it says repeat the problem above, which is really number five. We have a video on number five, so if you want to take a look at that, please feel free. All right, so let me just erase these little circles in here. Okay, great. So I already, I already took care of the first vector, right? And now let's do the second one. So totally different problem, create a new set of axes. Now the second vector, it says, now we're gonna move 20 meters in a direction exactly 20 degrees west of north. So what does that look like? Well, that would look like a line drawn here, right? 20 degrees west of north, and it has a value of 12. So now what I wanna do is solve the components of this vector. 
So it looks like I would have a positive y component and a negative x component. Okay, so choose one to start with first. Let's choose the x. Remember, you know the hypotenuse of this triangle, you know the angle, and you also are interested in finding the opposite side of that angle. So that sounds like in order to solve for our x value here, we need to use sine. So let's do that. So now sine of the angle is equal to, again, opposite over hypotenuse. So sine of 20 is equal to negative x over 12. Simply cross multiply now to find your x value. So now this would be sine of 20 times 12. So this works out to be 4.1, 4.1. And remember, move the negative sign on over. Okay, so now when I plug it into my component table, I'm gonna plug in negative 4.1 here. Wonderful. And now let's do the same thing for the y value, right? In my picture on the left-hand side. So I'm gonna circle it. Remember, I know the hypotenuse, I know the angle, and I'm looking for the side adjacent to that angle. So it sounds like we're gonna be using cosine this time. So cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. The cosine of 20 will equal negative, uh, excuse me, positive y in this case, over um, 20. No, excuse me, over 12. To simply solve for y, just cross multiply. So we have our y value being, and it's gonna be positive, so cosine of 20 multiplied by 12. So we get a value of about 11. And this is about 11 meters. Okay, great. So now let's take this. So let's take this value and plug it into our component table. So that's the y value. And now all we have to do is sum. So let's take the sum of these two sides. When I add the x's together, I get a value of negative 19.1, but I can't really include the one because of significant figures, so this just becomes negative 19. Okay, great. Then when I add the y's together, I get a value of negative two. Now these are the components. This is the x component of the resultant, and this is the y component of the resultant. So if you wanted to, let's say, draw a picture that represents the resultant, you would draw something that looks like this. So draw your, comp draw your axes, and then, Start with your x, move out negative 19 units to the left because it's negative x, so this is 19, and then move down two units because it says to move in the negative y direction. And now those are the components of the resultant and therefore the resultant vector itself will be the distance from the start to the end. So this is the resultant. And, this would be the angle of interest that we would want to solve for in terms of the direction. Okay, wonderful. So now remember our formula that, we, that I developed in the in last lecture or in, or in the last uh, question, that the resultant vector can be simply found by taking the square root of the sum of all the x's squared plus the sum of all the y components squared. Now the formula look, might look a little intimidating, but don't worry, that's just what we did here. We took the sums, these are the sums. So this y value, you're gonna plug into here and just square it. And then this x value, you're gonna plug into here and just square it. So now we have the resultant vector equaling the square root of the x was negative 19, remember parentheses around it squared, plus negative two, parentheses around it squared. So now let's take out the calculator. Okay, let's do the math. So 19 uh, square root of negative 19 squared and then plus negative two squared. So we should get an answer of 19.1. I should round down in terms of sig figs, but it, one of the sides of my triangle is 19. If I say the hypotenuse is also 19, it's almost a little, it doesn't make sense, right? Because they can't be the same measure. So let's just write 19.1 meters. Makes me just feel a little better. So this is the magnitude of the resultant. So in my picture above, this would be 19.1 meters. Now, how do we solve for theta? How do we solve for this angle in here? So same thing. I came up with a formula before that said we can simply uh, solve, so we can have the tangent of the resultant angle is equal to the sum of all the y's divided by the sum of all the x's. Okay, and in order to, if you guys look back to 
number five that I just did, it'll walk you through how I came up with these equations. If you're if you're interested, that mean well if you're interested in an a, you'll check it out. So I'm going to plug in the sum of all the y there, and now plug in the x's to there. So what do we get? So now we get tangent of my resultant would be negative two. You can also, by the way, take the square root, uh, not square root, you can also take the absolute values of this because you're really interested in what the positive answer is um, because you're going to have to kind of draw the picture anyway to, uh, to tell where that angle is uh, referring to. But it doesn't really matter. Here the negatives are going to cancel. So it would be negative 19 on the bottom. So the tangent then of your angle, so take negative 2 divided by 19, get an answer of about... 0.11 and then do the inverse tangent so second tan of 0.11 and that comes out to be 6.3 6.3 degrees great now that you're almost done but the only thing is now we just have to give that's the value of the measure but we just have to say you know in terms of this degree measure uh, where is it that degree measure is relative to what well it's relative to the west direction Okay, so how I would totally sum up the answer to this problem would be that the resultant vector, I'm going to put it in the middle of the page, is equal to 19.1 meters at 6.3 degrees south of west. And that would fully describe the resultant vector now. I gave both the magnitude and the direction. All right, guys, and, and also, by the way, if you check number five, it's the same answer, right? which it should be, and that's what the question is kind of asking us to do. So thanks for checking it out, guys. I hope this helped. Just another thought. Uh, that's, why the component, <laughs> that's why the component table works. It doesn't matter which vector you do first. Right? It doesn't matter if you did the 20-meter um, vector and then the 12-meter vector in that order, or you started with the 12 and then did the, did the 22nd doesn't matter because you're summing them all up anyway. So the order of, right, that's one of the principles of math. Two plus three is the same as three plus two. So that's the beauty of the table. So look at each, each vector individually, sum them up. Well, first look at each vector individually. Find the components. Sum them up. That, those summations will represent the components of the resultant vector. Then plug it into your formula. Done. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. Hope it helped. Until next time.